This hack tip is brought to you by the all-new G Flex 2 from LG. Life's good. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm Shannon Morse, and today we are checking out Wireshark and TCP flow control. That sounds weird. So when sending TCP packets, you can run into problems in which the outcome would be retransmissions or duplicates, which we explained a couple of weeks ago. Now there is a way to keep packet loss from happening too, because why would you always just want to deal with it after the problem has occurred? Might as well keep it from happening in the first place. Now this is called a sliding window mechanism. It lets you adjust the rate of data retransmission depending on the destination's receive window. The destination has a certain amount of bytes that it can hold in a TCP buffer space. And if the amount of data spills over the buffer space, it results in packet loss. And that's no fun. So if we look at a packet in Wireshark, this is gonna be found under the window size under the TCP packet header. So if I look at my very, very first packet up here, everything should be totally cool and totally easy and simple. My window size is 8760, so lots and lots of bytes, and my acknowledgement number is one. Now if I go to my second one, my acknowledgement number is 2921, so quite a few bytes were sent, and my window size has decreased to 5840. If you take the original amount of the window size, 8760, minus the bytes that we had, 2921, you'll equal out to 5840 minus the first previous byte, of course. Now after that, we get another one with 5841, and the window size value now has dropped down to 2920. So we're getting less and less space from that destination, telling us that we, uh, we might wanna slow down all those packets that are coming over to us real quick. Now each time the amount of bytes accumulates in this thing called a buffer space, so that's where it's all accumulating, eventually it'll be processed up to the application layer protocol and the buffer space will be available again for a new packet of bytes. Now if a server is receiving data too quickly and it can't process all the bytes fast enough to keep its buffer space low, it can send information in its acknowledgement packet telling the source to send lower amounts of data. Now know how when you have like a big empty pail, you have just a big empty pail, there's nothing in there right now. You can basically dump water into it really, really fast and it won't spill out because the pail is large enough to hold all of that water. Well, if I replace that with something like a little coffee cup, you would have to pour water into it a little bit slower so that it doesn't spill all over the place and you can't hold as much water in the cup until you've already drank what's already in there. Mm delicious coffee. So now I can have a little bit more bytes in there. That's kind of what's happening here. Now, if a destination is running out of space, it can also send an acknowledgement saying that it ha has zero byte size window, this thing called a zero byte size window. And then the source will just send all these packets called keep alive packets. Now, if we had this issue, you would see something like this. So I have my middle packet right here. It's uh, number four. If I scroll down a little bit, you'll notice that the window size says zero. So in this case, the source is going to know, okay, I need to stop and pause for a little bit until I can send some more bytes because I currently don't have enough room to send all the data that I want to. I have another example here that is in a save file where we have our first packet, which looks completely normal, length is 1410, but then TCP sends over this packet or the destination sends a TCP packet called zero window. Now this is going to show a window size of zero and then we'll have our keep alive packet, which simply says a window size of 108, so very, very little packets, another zero window, a keep alive, zero window, keep alive, and zero window. So you'll continue seeing those one after another until eventually it has enough room in that buffer size, in that buffer window to allow more bytes to be sent through. And that's pretty much how zero windows work. Of course, if you have a question or a comment, you can always send those below or you can email us tips at hack5.org and be sure to check out our sister show, Hack5, for more great stuff just like this. I'll be there reminding you to trust your technolust. This hack tip is brought to you by the all new G Flex 2 from LG. Life's good.